So we're gonna be checking out a brand new laser from Xtool, the P2. And I might sound really different right now, uh, and that's because this laser is really different. Like, really, really different. All right, let's uh, get into it. So this is the Xtool P2. I'm not actually sure what P1 was, but this is the brand new CO2 laser from Xtool. This has been the one a lot of people have been asking about. A lot of people have been very excited about. So we're gonna dive into how this thing works and we're gonna compare it to some of the other machines out there like the most recent Flux Hexa, which I did a review on very recently, as well as the Glowforge, some other competitors, and Xtool's own D1, which is a diode laser. So you can see which one might be best for you. Okay, so let's get some basics out of the way. This is a 55 watt laser tube that's compared to about 50 watts when you're looking at Polar or the GWIC machine, which are pretty much the same thing, and then 60 watts for the Hexa machine. So the work bed is 26 by 14 and the actual workable area is a little bit less. So still is pretty big, not as big as the Hexa, but bigger than the machines like Polar and GWIC. On the speed side of things, this is 600 millimeters per second. That is your max speed, but you kind of want to take that max speed with a grain of salt because this thing is going to be moving around a lot, especially if you're actually cutting things out. So you're really gonna be limited more by the acceleration. And for the most part, these machines are at about the same speed. Now the Hexa has it at 900 millimeters per second, but other machines like the Polar and the GWIC are in like the 500 to 600 range. So this is pretty much in that same ballpark. And then overall on the construction side of things, uh, it is, it's nice. Uh, it does have a plastic shell. Uh, so like these parts are plastic, but the internal components, so like this right there, this is pretty much all metal. So like your internal structure is metal, but the outside of it is like a hard plastic. Some of the really nice lasers, this will actually be glass. This is like some type of polycarbonate, acrylic, something like that. And they have these nice, I think, pneumatic struts, which lets you actually open it up. You can get to about like right there, it's gonna hold it. But those supports actually help keep the lid open once you have it up, so it's not gonna fall on your head, which would not be good. Now, this machine is actually sitting on top of the riser. And we're gonna get into what this thing is in a minute because there's actually quite a few features that this allows you to do. And then on the connection side of things, you can use USB, Ethernet, as well as Wi-Fi, which is pretty much standard across all these lasers other than Glowforge, which is just laser because they want you to use their cloud software. In Xtools case, they do a really nice job on the software side of things. Not only do they support Lightburn, which is awesome and is my favorite piece of software, it is also paid, but this also comes with Xtool Creative Space. And they really have been upgrading that and adding lots of new features from when I first used it way back with, I think, the first D1. For most applications, it's gonna do a really good job for you. And they actually have some pretty cool features we're gonna get into here in a minute that I haven't seen on any other laser. In terms of the laser itself, it is a CO2 laser, meaning that the laser beam is generated in the back. You can see the glass tube right here. There's a water reservoir right next to it. So you have to fill that up with water and a mix of potentially antifreeze. Then that tube generates the beam. It shoots out this back corner right here, bounces through this mirror, and then comes into the laser head. They have this cover, which a lot of the laser companies are starting to do. They actually cover up kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the thing. But the lens that finally focuses the laser is inside of this. And this is attached to a movable Z axis. So there's a stepper motor in here that gives you a pretty nice Z axis travel. In fact, the max thickness of material in this is two and a half inches. And if you kind of look in here, uh, that may not be as obvious because their work bed is different than any of the other machines out there. They actually take cues from more of the industrial machines. And instead of a honeycomb bed, which I just pulled this one from the D1. So this is the one that Xtool provides. You can see it's like a honeycomb shape. So when you cut things out, it can fall through. But more importantly, you're getting airflow underneath. That is the big thing and why you want some type of raised bed when you're using a laser. But for this guy, they have these slats that are spaced throughout your work area. And these are removable and you have a bunch of different slots to put them in. So you can definitely modify them for your use case. I find these usually give you way better airflow than a honeycomb bed. But if you're doing the straight engraving, they also have a removable tray that is at the bottom. So this pulls out right here. You can already see some of the stuff I've been 
cutting out. But once you take that out, that frees you up to the workspace underneath and the riser, which again, we'll get into here in a second. Now out of the box, this comes with support for their rotary module, which you can also use on the D1. I think that is the connection for it right there. And because you have so many different options with your work bed, you're able to drop that down a lot further. And especially when you're using the riser, you're able to get that really low. So you can do some pretty thick cylinders, cups, Yetis, whatever you want to engrave. It does a nice job. And you actually get 8.2 inches of clearance when you're using this riser. So you can definitely get some thick materials. It also has internal air assist. It's got a fan in the back, pretty standard with all the other machines. Now on the safety side of things, this actually has a feature that isn't on any other lasers I've tested. Even my high-end Thunder laser or my bigger industrial Omtech laser doesn't have this. And this is a mechanical lock that will actually lock this lid when it's running, which is definitely great if you're in a space with kids or people that aren't familiar with these type things. Now, most of these machines, if you open the lid, it automatically cuts power to the machine. But in this case, you physically can't open it. The lock is actually right here. So when you go to start the laser, which this button right here does it, this pops out and you can't open the lid. Now, another safety feature this has that you really only see on the high-end machines is a physical safety switch. It's actually right over here. You probably can't see it. So you can stop the laser with the button, but you could also just hit the safety switch and that is going to kill the power to the machine as well. And then in terms of physical controls, you really only have one and that is a button. That's going to be the same as a Glowforge, your Polar, or your G-Wick. Your Flux Hexa actually has a color touch screen that is built in, so like a little tablet basically, which is really nice. But this is a little bit more than just the button because they do give you a display and it will give you like a little indicator in terms of like how much longer your job has. It also lets you know if you have like Wi-Fi connection, if your lid's locked, just a couple symbols that at a glance, you can kind of see what the status of your machine is. All right, now one feature that is becoming very common on these desktop CO2s is a camera system. And this definitely has one. In fact, this kind of matches the Glowforge level in terms of having multiple cameras. So there is one right here. If I move this out of the way, this is a wide angle camera. So when you have the lid shut, or actually when you have it open, since this isn't moving, you can get a wide angle view in the software of what is on your work bed. That's really handy. Now, if you're doing really precise positioning, this isn't exact. It actually has another camera in the laser head itself or like the laser head assembly. It's like right there. And in the software, you can take pictures of specific positions in your work bed so you can line things up exactly. I'll kind of overlay this image on top of the wide angle image and they don't quite line up, which is a little bit annoying, but it definitely works. Now the focus system is pretty interesting. So on the Polar and the GWIC machines, it does have a Z axis that can move up and down with a stepper motor, but you still have to define what the thickness is of your material in the software to be able to do it. And this guy will measure it and it's actually using a red laser dot, I believe, to do it. And there's two that are actually on the machine. One comes out this corner right over here. And in the software, you can get like a general thickness of your material. This doesn't move. So you'll see that red laser dot when you close the lid. If your material is the same thickness and it's positioned so that red laser dot is hitting it, you're gonna be good to go. Now this also has another laser pointer that's like right here in this corner that lets you move the laser head around to take a measurement from there. They're saying that one is more exact. And from my testing, it does a pretty good job. Now, since you're able to take thickness measurements at different points over your material, you can actually use material that isn't uniform or flat. This was just a bent up sheet of paper that I put in here and they have this curved surface ability, which will basically give you a grid of points over the surface. The laser head will move to each of those points, take a measurement and they give you this like virtual 3D rendering of what your surface is. Then you can put your artwork on top of that and either cut and engrave. And as this is going, you can see this is automatically moving the Z axis while this machine is running. The only other machine I've ever seen this on is the full spectrum Muse. And that one is actually doing it live. So like while it is going, it is taking that measurement. This is all something you need to do beforehand. So you can't move the material after you've kind of taken your measurement and got everything set. So it takes a little bit longer, but it's really cool to see how they've got this implemented. So practically I've seen people use this on like organic services, AKA I've done this with like rocks before, since it's not perfectly flat, 
or even like leaves if you're doing a really light engraving, but you kind of want to follow like the contours of the leaf. And then even I did a test of if you had something angled. So it was a flat board, but I put it at an angle and the laser head was able to go up and down as we were going across the material. So if you're engraving something that even is rounded, this is going to be able to do a really good job of figuring that out. For you. Now, I won't get deep into the actual performance. For the most part, these CR2 lasers are going to perform pretty similar. The only real difference is going to be how strong the actual laser tube is and then how quickly it can move the laser head around to keep up with that power. But this is on three millimeter basswood. So you can see we're getting some cutting at the top. I actually messed it up and I ran it too slow down there, but it does a good job. And in general, this is what I definitely recommend people do. Some type of test where you have a bunch of different parameters for your material and your machine to see what's going to work the best. Okay, but let's actually get into what is probably the most unique feature of this machine other than that curved surface ability, which is nice. And that is once you take out this tray, it actually has a few different places where you can put this tray back in. And I think these are just labeled by height, or you can also just remove this tray completely. Now, what's cool is not only do you have this like pass through slot right here, as well as one in the very back. So what's nice is if you have a big piece of material, you can actually pass this all the way through your machine. So you're able to engrave really big things where you're only limited by the width of the machine. Now, Glowforge also has a front and back pass through, and they give you some tiling abilities that let you do really long materials. Xtool decided to step that up and actually created a conveyor belt system that will automatically move your material through the machine while it is running. I have never seen anything like this on a machine. Now here is a shot from Xtool of that actually running. This is on a pre-production machine, so it might look a little bit different. I don't have mine set up right now, but I am planning on doing a follow-up where I dedicate the majority of the video of actually showing off that conveyor belt feature, just because it's so crazy. I thought it deserved it. But just know, even if you don't have that, having a pass-through is super handy when you're working with big material. Now we really are starting to get into a pretty fun era of having a lot of these nice desktop CO2 machines that you can get. Here Here's a quick chart of all the ones I have recently reviewed in my shop. So the Xtool P2, the Flux Hexa, the Ohmtech Polar, the GWIC Cloud Pro 2, as well as I am throwing the Glowforge Pro in there. Now this chart doesn't include the bigger, more industrial style units you can get from Ohmtech or nicer brands like Thunder or even Epilog. These are specifically these desktop style, like Glowforge basically style machines. And you can see these all kind of stack up pretty similar. And if I was going to recommend one for you, it would be really hard because some of these features may matter more to you than others, with the big one probably being price. So this isn't the most expensive. That is the Glowforge, which is like 7,000 bucks, or even the Flex Hexa at 6,300. This is currently $4,200 at the time of this video. I think they're actually running like a pre-sale, so it's probably going to go up from there. But no, relatively, it is in the middle because then you have the Polar and the GWIC in the $3,000 range. So really, what is that like $1,000, $1,500 extra getting you. Well, in terms of the P2 itself, it is going to give you a bigger work area, a little bit more powerful glass tube, and a really nice camera system. With the Polar, the GWIC, and this, you can use Lightburn with all of them, which has been like a key decider for me when I recommend in the past. But the part that really makes this stand out is just like this guy, the riser, which is an additional cost. You can buy all this as a package currently. This is probably going to be like in the six to $1,000 additional expense range but this opens you up to really being able to use a rotary. You can use a rotary even without it. You're going to be just super limited by size, but then throwing in the pass through on the front and the back, you can get some really big material inside of this, as well as having really thick material that you want to engrave. So overall, it's a nice machine. And if those features are really important to you, this really could be a nice option for you to check out. Now let's compare this to the other machine from Xtool, their D1. Specifically, just how does a CO2 machine compare to a diode laser? Now you've got pros on either side. The pros for a diode have to do a lot with its form factor. It's a lot smaller, although you can still engrave really big things, but it's like open air, so you can just put it on top of something. Typically, diodes are going to have a smaller laser dot, and they're just generated in a different manner. I usually find engraving with a diode, you're going to get a darker, nicer engrave versus using a CO2, which this is really geared towards more cutting. You can obviously do engraving with this. I just mostly cut stuff with my CO2, 
CO2s. Normally your CO2s will also be faster as a result. Xtool just came out with their 40 watt module, which does get really close to the 55 watt, but that 40 watt module brings in probably the biggest limitations and the biggest pros for a CO2 machine. And that is the fact that it is a fully integrated system that's safe. So this is fully enclosed versus a diode, which is just like out in the open. The laser itself is an invisible light versus a diode that you need to have eye protection on at all times. I'd feel totally fine running this with other people around, especially with the fact that this can't be opened versus a diode. I really don't like to use unless it's just me inside the shop. And then the CO2s and this one specifically have a really nice camera system. That's not going to be something you're really going to find with the diode. Now, one probably big pro for a diode machine is just the laser itself in the fact that it is really interchangeable. I swapped out the 20 watt that I had on my Pro for a 40 watt. It didn't take long at all. And there definitely is a clear upgrade path for that machine as you want to get something that is stronger and more powerful. Versus this, you really can't get a bigger, more powerful laser because the laser tube is going to get longer as a result, meaning the overall form factor of this thing is going to have to change. But Xtool is giving you some pretty cool ways to improve the performance of this machine by giving you more functionalities with this crazy riser system, which is still just wild. So I would love to know what you think and what questions you have about this machine. I am planning on doing a follow up with that conveyor belt, and I would love to include your questions with it as well. And if you want to check out probably the most direct competitor to this, which is the Flux Hexa, we're going to jump into that review right now. Till next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.